Um, so, hi, I'm back again. Um, and in the program, uh, it's, it's got half an hour to talk about uh, deduplication. And um, it may or may not go to half an hour. We may or may not have half an hour. But the, uh, the key thing is that I'm going to try and weave a few things together here. Um, as I said earlier, I am a primarily a user. I'm not a developer. Um, Agileware and Justin helped me with uh, all that, that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, as much as he tells me our um, site was actually created a long time ago and, and needs, uh, needs some updating. Um, I use it. I do all the database admin. I send out communications. And I manage the fundraising programs and appeals and things like that. Uh, a big job. Um, one of my bugbears is uh, deduplication because I my experience is that we can really easily get ourselves into a big de duplicate hole um, uh, periodically and then it's a big job to uh, clear that up. One I wish I didn't have to do. Well, one I wish that was far simpler. Um, so I want to give you a couple examples um, and um, but before I do that this is my layman's um, uh, understanding of what Civi does about duplicates. Um, so Civi CRM has the ability to create rules uh, and uh, based on um, fields in the database and you can actually go in and create your own rules so that you can set your own uh, level of um, uh, thresholds for measuring duplicates and then it applies these rules um, in, a, in a few different uh, uh, parts of the, the, the core database. Um, one is uh, when you're um, adding in a new contact record, as you go, it'll, it'll, it'll be checking in the, these rules in the background, and it will come up with a pop-up, hey, you've, uh, this person's already on the database, do you want to merge them, do you want to switch to it, etc. Another example is, um, and this is uh, from our experience, is on um, web forms. When people are entering in uh, on Drupal, when they're entering in their details, you can also use that um, CV integ integration to also check at that moment um, your, your rules and whether it's a duplicate or not. Uh, and then, um, but there's... That's one of the areas where I think it gets murky after that for me. You know, um, what, how does it make those choices um, is, uh, is an area of um, uh, scepticism for me. Um, the other the third uh, element where it checks these rules is it's got a bulk um, dedupe um, facility where you can go in and uh, run your rules and it will say, you've got 1,000 or you know 2,000 people who are duplicates and if you wanted to, you can hit, hit this big button that says bulk merge them all. I have issues with that as well. Um, and and, and uh, an assistant who worked for me, he used to always um, give me these classic examples, is that um, when you look at two side by side in that bulk mode, you can, you can see that the spelling of their name, uh, or maybe it's a couple, Mr. the record is actually written as Mr. and Mrs. Uh, blogs, um, but the duplicate that's been, been found is just Mrs. Jane blogs, because she used uh, an email address that they share as a couple, and that's caused the, the duplicate to arise. So. We actually want the Mr. and Mrs. Um, uh, record, not the Jane blogs. Um, and, but <laughs> somebody else may have a different uh, preference there as well. So my point is it does these three, uh, has this rules, has this infrastructure, and it and applies duplicate checking in three places. And I would say that this is pretty basic, what you, what you need for duplicate checking from any CV CRM when it's being entered uh, either by the user or by admin and an ability to go through and bulk do stuff. But there's probably some room for improvement here and I'm probably putting that mildly. The next point I wanted to make before I open up to, to a bit of a discussion is um, 
that I would love to be able to enforce this, um, what some other um, platforms would do, and have one record for per email address. So um, I have, or, or, or rather, use the email to decide uh, exclusively who where the duplicates lie, um, or pretty pretty close to that. But I have this problem where um, you have to be really careful whether it's the payment page or the web form, um, how those are configured. It may uh, very simply put the same email address in twice and and tag one as a billing address, perhaps it came from a purchase, and another as a home address that came from a take action. And so in all of my attempts to deduplicate, what I end up doing in merging is actually having a huge email table. It's got it's got uh, email addresses that the same email address multiple times. It's got different people. Uh, uh, records are slightly different with the same email address multiple times, and those kind of duplicates are extra messy. So, one of the things that uh, I wanted to, why I'm, why I'm doing this is because I'm going to open up to see if anybody's got ways to, ideas on how to help me. Uh, and just to stress that, um, uh, and build from the presentation before, this is a community of, of um, developers and users and um, I don't necessarily have all the answers, um, but others will. And so uh, share and ask questions and um, uh, don't look at something like duplicates and think um, it's beyond me because um, other people will have the answers. So, question, did, did, does anybody have similar experiences with duplicates? Yes, yes, yes. Does it, uh, Peter, go first. Yeah, go on. Um, I, it is worth understanding how the duplicate rules work. They look a little um, intimidating at times. One really big hint is that when it's doing a check to see if person A matches person B, and if you have the email field in there, and if one of the records has that email field in there multiple times, once for billing, once for home, once for whatever, it will count the score of that email for every time it finds it. So if you set up a, uh, an unsupervised rule, yeah. or a general rule, for example, where you've got your first name, can you just pull up the, edit one of those rules so we can sort of point to what we're talking about. When you put in the, the, the weights for each of your fields, so you say first name, you're going to give that a five score, and if it matches on last name, you're going to give it a five score, and if, you, if it matches on email address, you're going to give it a five score, and you set your threshold at 15, thinking that that will only ever match if it's five for first, five for last, and five for email, uh -huh. you'll get caught out if one email record has this, well, if one city record has the same email three times, because it'll go, first name doesn't match, last name doesn't match, email, I right, match billing, it match home, it match work, bingo, false match, and you'll lose data. So that's one. <coughs> Second thing, absolutely check your thresholds and check that you haven't got any that might have a zero set at the bottom. Because they fail, they fail badly, and every time you try and run the rule to find the duplicates, your database will start smoking at the edges. <laughs> Basically, it's trying to check absolutely every contact against absolutely every contact with every single possible field that can find. The users will be smoking at the edges as well. <laughs> um, whenever you're doing an import, think really clearly about what you want to set the criteria on which a match is counted. Because every time you run an import, you can set the supervised rule. And don't just presume, uh, you can set the, the matching rule. Don't presume to use the same rule each time. Think about what you're importing, and think about, have you got the phone number? Have you got a date of birth? Can you use those to help you finesse your, is this a match, and is that a match? Yeah? Mm -hmm. In terms of that, that question, so when you do run the, 
I'm going to batch update it. I'm going to batch merge everybody, and you smile as it ticks around. Mm, this is great, and as you say, it then adds the same email address yet again to a record because it yeah. was in a different location type. Um, we have SQL that can dig you out of that hole because it'll basically go through and say, find every contact that has an email multiple times in different location types and blah, blah. It's not fun to run, but if your data's in a mess, um, we're happy to share that SQL. And if you've got somebody who won't break your database by running it, then you know it'll, it'll get you out of that hole. And I'd love to hear other people's opinions. Yeah. So... Um Thank you very much for that. That uh, is very insightful to me, hopefully helpful to other people. Um, what I wanted to see now uh, is, was there other um, burning questions that uh, people need some help on? A classic example. Um, yeah. Can I just ask you to explain unsupervised and supervised? Uh, yes, not the best person. To, Peter, do you want to do this one too? Seamus, go on. Uh, so so, generally speaking, as uh, a good question, so unsupervised rules are generally used by the contribution pages or whatever. So, it's the idea being these are the rules that CVCRM will use whenever it's trying to do anything automatically without user input. So, when someone fills in a contribution page, it will use the unsupervised rule for that con contact type to try to match it to some data. So... That's potentially, and obviously, those are the sort of rules that you really want to get right because, as Pete mentioned, like if someone's just filling in a form, you might lose data here or there. So, whereas supervised, I'm not 100% certain about supervised in general, but I do know unsupervised is used in those sort of automatic things. But Eileen, <laughs> so supervised is when you enter a contact and it tells you if there's a matching contact. Now, there's also the pop up you get with when you're doing your data entry. That one currently uses just last name. There's a pull request in the view at the moment to make it use the uh, supervised rule and there's quite a lot of discussion on that pull request mostly coming from me about some of the complexities of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to just say is that I have a very specific interest in DJ and this is the project that I'm expected to be working on for Wikimedia Foundation over the next month or two. So, um, yeah, I'm certainly very interested in hearing people's thoughts because... There will um, be some great improvements coming uh, Well, Wikimedia does feel... I mean, Wikimedia does have different problems. I mean, the problem that I solved last year was the scale issue because we, we wound up starting the batch deducing <laughs> process which you spoke about from the command line and it ran every two minutes um, for six weeks <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing maybe 5,000 records at a time um, <laughs> yeah so we yeah <laughs> some millions of contacts um, what the batch, if you run the batch from the command line in safe mode, then it will find the people who match your rules and it will attempt to merge them. And if they differ, it will reject them. So it is, uh, and that's how we run it in Wikimedia. We only match on email. And if there's any differences, then we just reject them. And I have got some rules that do things like look for false conflicts. So if it's, um, if it's a punctuation or something, then it will be able to kind of get past that. Um, and that stuff's not something I'd like, I certainly would like to make more easily accessible for other people, but there's some pieces of work in between. But the upshot of all of this is that I'm very interested in hearing from you on this particular topic on chat. I'm less present on Stack Exchange, but on chat at City Sierra, but all Oh, yeah, so that's oh, terrific. Um, yeah, just going to say there's an extension out there that I believe uh, John, the case I've heard with, which allows you to set up uh, auto corrections for email addresses. So, like with the, for what we call the top level domain, uh, that is like .com or whatever. So, because obviously people in their infinite wisdom decide to put gmail.co.uk or gmail.com. Whatever, 
because and or misspell it. And so there's no thing an extension out there that will go through an automatic, which will actually help find the address as well. Because obviously, if you've got an email address like chancellor001.gmail.com and you get chancellor001.gmail.com, it won't leave that in match because the exactly. elements are not that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. So some uh, some great knowledge um, there that's that's helpful to me and hopefully helpful to you. Um, uh, so we've got five minutes. Um, I actually just wanted to go back to earlier in the day. Um, both Mick and I, in in our discussions about mailings, were talking about uh, analytics and being able to pull out the information you need to make uh, you know, great decisions and insights into your um, mailings and your data in general. So just do you want to chat more a bit? Um, and so Mick's going to share with you some tools on how to do that.